Okay, we're back. So now let's move to the second mesh. So remember the first one was the sweep method. This is a large mesh. So I'm not going to use this one to create you now the fluent, uh, to run the fluent case. Okay, you have everything there. So let's focus in this one. Let's try to get a, a quartz or mesh. So remember, drag and drop here, put it here. Every now and then save. And now double click there, it will launch and start in no uh, mesh in here, ANSYS measure. Just to rem a reminder here, you have the location of all files, okay, these dimensions and everything. Okay, so now an entering ANSYS measure, it will again exp Export the geometry. Even even if the geometry is coming from, from a different mesh uh, geometry tool, it doesn't matter. Okay, it will get dimension. I will put it here, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so at this point we we have our geometry here. Okay, so probably here in my case I see the color is dark because maybe I forgot in the geometry to 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 put it as a as a, as a fluid region, okay, or probably, yeah, a space clean, you don't have that option. So if for you this is a, an, an eyesore, what you can do here is geometry, you select here, and here graphic properties, you go and put the, their 0 0.5, and then you have the transparency, okay, so if, if that is a nicer for you, otherwise just leave it like that. So I add that transparency, and now let's, create the instructor mesh. So we follow the usual steps here from this one, you can change that value. So let me put here zero five, okay. And now let me add a method, method, select the whole domain, apply. And this one, I want to have tetrahedron, which is the instructor one. Then also you have different techniques here, algorithm, patch conforming and punch and panda. I recommend you to go for the patch conforming, but go into the documentation to see the difference. Okay. But go for the punch conforming. And at this point, I think I can go generate. Okay. So this is fully instructor. So this is super easy. And we have this triangular mesh. Okay with this reference and now we can add sizing okay so let's say that for instance uh, okay let me zoom in here so i'm not happy with this sizing in this wall so let's say this wall okay you go insert sizing select the face so selection depending on what you want to choose there and put a size there so i put there now 0.1 let me put 0.5 Okay, so remember that you can add also curvature here. This is local, so you put curvature, yes, you enable. So you are telling here, when you put this angle, you are telling that you are going to put a cell every 18 degrees. The smaller the value, the better, okay? So if you put two, it will put a lot of cells. Okay, so you said 18, it's a good value, okay? So leave it default if you want less, put here probably 12, okay? But that is the meaning of this angle. But here you have this or this. So I know that in this case, this one is smaller than this one. So this one will have preference over this one. So as I go now, okay, so going to put that fine mesh in this surface and here it's going to use the global parameters. Okay, so I haven't defined anything here in the faces. So it's going to use global parameters. As you see, this is a little bit slower than the previous one. Okay, because the idea not generating the mesh, uh, uh, the instructor mesh, the triangulation and everything. And honestly, I think, okay, let, let me stop here because I think, yeah, the, the value, this face sizing is a little bit large. So let, let me put zero, zero 08, okay. That one, yeah, it will take a while. It will put a lot of cells. Okay, so I, I, I increase it to 0 0.008 and Let's see here what's happening. Okay. Okay, let me stop it again. So let me put zero one. Okay, so you have these two. So let, let's 
Yeah, I recall that this may take some time. So let's put, let me put here large pie also because I want to, to have a mesh that is relative quartz. So this is the one that we're going to use to, to run the simulation. As you put like 0 0.05, probably you're going to put a lot of cells. So you start to see here that it's finer there. Okay, so the next step, for instance, that is you would like to add the boundary layer, just go here, insert, inflation layer, scope the whole domain, the face, this one, and then add the layer. So for the amount of time being, let's use those values, the full values. I want to have a quartz mesh, so I'm not going to, to put a lot of layers close to the wall. It will be a wall, a wall modeling. Okay, so adding that and let's wait until we get the, the mesh. Okay, 100% and this is what we have. Okay, so I'm happy with this and satisfied you have it there. See that is resolving nicely curvature there. There, yes, these cells, this is too large. So remember that since it's about the, your velocity profile and also kinetic energy profile, so see that this is relative quartz. But remember, this is a structure, mesh 3D, that we need, we, I want to keep the, the cell count low. So see that this one is almost half a million, okay? So this, these are the issues that it will grow really fast, okay, this mesh. So for instance, you can go if you want to reduce here. Let me put here instead of this, I'm put 0.4 or 25. Okay. So now I'm going to get a smaller cells because the global value. Okay. Then we have this definition here, the boundary layer, but we're going to get a, a larger cell count. Okay. Let's wait. Let's see. So it's generating there. And now we have the mesh. Okay, so, well, didn't change much. This is what we have, okay? So the surface is resolved but relative, relative nice. Okay, it's very nice, the surface mesh, capturing curvature, okay? So you want to see the effect of curvature, just increase the cell size or that angle. Now the curvature angle, you will see that it, it's really bad, the mesh, to, uh, no, in the surface. And the problem that we have here is that we don't have enough cells. But for our purposes, the, the, this is okay. We want to run a fast simulation just to show this setup, which pre pretty much is the same as the previous one. So let me do another mo modification. So let me reduce this cell count. So let me instead put here, no, the, that is okay. Okay. Zero five and face size and let me put zero let me put first zero five let me disable this and just to show you the influence when you you don't resolve well the curvature okay so this will be a a quartz mesh see that it's super fast but see here that your curvature is not resolved well okay so this is why it's important to resolve good, but this happens very often for those working now with strong aerodynamics, winds, airfalls in the, in the leading edge. So you don't resolve well the code, and this might be a problem. Okay. So here let's put, uh, I think it was 0 0.2 previously. Now well, let me put 0 0.25. See what happens there. I see that it's still, it's, it's a little bit sulky. And let me put 0 0.01. It's still, it's not a good one. Sorry, and change, I know, I need to change here. Sorry, I was changing the, the wrong place. This is the one that I want to change there. Okay, this should be a good mesh. Okay. And we are okay. We are done. Okay. So see that nice resolution code, but you're okay. Your cell count there. So see that in this case, I disable in the face, the, the character curvature and I control it this one, but if you want, you can also enable this one. And then basically we'll put an element every 18 degrees or an element every four degrees. Okay, depending what you want to put there. So for this case, it is okay to leave it 
Now, one thing that is you change parameters that you also highlight by is to right click here and clear generated data, erase previous mesh and start from zero. Okay, I highly recommend you to do that. And that is recommended because sometimes the surface mesh in my in my kit in memory the previous surface mesh, and maybe you are adding new, new new parameters here to control that surface mesh, and that is not being modified. So that is why I like to erase everything. Okay, you erase everything, I will redo everything. So this, so this is the mesh we have. We're within this old count. Okay, and this is the one that we're going to use to do the case setup. Uh, but before moving to Fluent, we need to assign boundary conditions, something that we didn't do in the previous mesh, okay? But you need to do it, don't forget that one. So here you need to do in 3D, you select surfaces. So let's say that select face, this one, right click, name selection, I call it inlet, select this one, I will call this one wall, and then you go to the other side. You have it here. Select this one and call it outlet and see that you have your three name selections there. So you have that one, the wall and the other extreme. Okay, so this is this is all. Okay, so this is how you set up the case. Okay, so always remember after generating the mesh, do not forget to 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 do the, the name selection and name it selection here in the machine tool, you get access to all the surfaces. You can do the name it selections also in the geometry. I don't like to do it there. I'm not going to show that, but you can look in the tutorial help and you will see, okay, or if you are good, it's just let, let me know. But it's better to do it here in the mesh, okay? And if you redo the mesh, you change something, you need to change this one. So this is, this get access just to the surface. So this one you need to redo it is you change your 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 geometry the input geometry here we're not changing that we're okay so at this point we have everything we can close here okay it will save everything okay and we're ready to go so see check mark check mark everything is cool okay so the next step step will be transfer everything to fluent so that will be the object of the next video okay thank you for your attention see you next time bye